Do you know what a webhook is? Could you explain what a webhook is to a seven-year-old? Well, there's obviously many videos out there that you can stumble across that explain what a webhook is, but I'm going to explain a webhook in the simplest terms using some analogies that I can. So that's what I'm going to dive into, give you a couple examples of how you could use that, but that's what you're going to see coming up in this video. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Chris. I am the owner of Boolean Automation and Boolean Review. The automation business is a consulting company that helps painting business businesses automate their business processes to eliminate hundreds of hours of data entry every month and increase reporting. If you're interested in learning more about that, you can schedule a consultation or look into our course. The review software is a tailored solution specifically designed for painting and home service businesses that absolutely crushes Google review generation. So if you need Google reviews, take a look at Boolean review. You can schedule a demo, a trial of the software, but that's what we do here at Boolean. Now let's get into this topic of web hooks. All right. So first thing is there's lots of videos out there that describe what a web hook is API and applications and all this HTTP requests. And it, it just gets very much into code. So I'm going to use a very simple analogy and I'm going to try to explain this to my seven-year-old instead of with the technical language. So imagine that inside your computer, you have this little gremlin that is, you can tell them, hey, your job is whenever this event happens, I want you to pick up this cell phone and I want you to send a message to this other number. That's basically what a webhook is. It's sending a text message and it's like saying, whenever this happens, go send this information to that phone number. And this is how it was explained to me a long time ago. If you want a more technical understanding of a webhook, there's many videos that do that, but that's really all you need to know. So taking this a step further, let's say that that text message that you send is has some information in it. So the way that I would break this down is the two is this random number and the message, or in the case of webhooks, they call it the payload, has only one variable and that would be the message content. So Frank and Khaled are in town, let's meet up for dinner after work. So those that information is the payload that's getting sent. So let's just jump over into the webhook world. And in this case, rather than a phone number, you just need a unique URL that is created for receiving that payload of information. And instead of having one variable, you can have as many variables as you want. So you can have employee name is Frank meal type is blank. And each of these variables could be dynamic variables that are updating whenever the event is occurring. It's sending over these five pieces of information to a different application. So then the receiving app, or in this case, I'm using make as the receiving app uh, to take that information is able to use each one of these variables in a series of automations. So you can map in a more complex automation on the receiving end side. Anytime the employee name comes in, we want to take whatever the value is and put it in this application over here, or we want to update this property or whatnot. So that's the understanding what a, a webhook is. A step further, so just trying to think of, okay, how do I use this? So again, instead of this imaginary gremlin that's sending a text message, it's basically like every time this thing happens, that is the trigger that's going to send information from application number one to, or when that pay, the information is the payload. So it's just a packet of data. Think again, that text message, that's going boop over to the other one. And then application number two receives that information. So the example of this would be when a form is submitted on my website, I want to send information over like all the form contents to a different application. Or when you reach a particular step inside of Zapier, you want to use that step as the trigger to send data over to make. That's the one that I was talking about earlier. Or when an employee takes a certain action and they click a button, we want to have that trigger as something to do a series of events in another application. Another common one is like in Google Calendar, Outlook Calendar, when an app is created or, or when an event is created or updated or deleted, you want to go do something. So those are all things that potentially could a webhook could use to solve that. Now, how do you know if you can use a webhook to pass information between two apps? Well, first of all, the first app you're using has to actually have the ability to send webhooks and it needs to be able to trigger that webhook based on the particular event that you're wanting. So sometimes an app will say that it has a webhook functionality 
but the next thing you need to go do is see what are the things that I can trigger information or like a uh, webhook on. Sometimes it's like it will trigger an event on a contact being created, but if you update a particular property, that won't trigger a webhook because it on only the series of, of triggers are limited to whatever that app uses. And then the other app needs to have a URL to receive that information. So in this case, if I'm talking about transferring information from Zapier to Make, all you have to do is it, if either one of the apps you're using integrates with Zapier or Make, you might be able to bypass this step and not use a webhook. You could just use Zapier to, when this event happens, trigger this automation. And then we're not going to use a, a webhook because I can just update the other app directly inside of Zapier. But in the case of like, let's say you're using Make for something and it doesn't integrate with the app that you're wanting to, you could use a webhook to pass the information back to Zapier and then update the, uh, the app using uh, Zapier's integration. So last thing here is again, the specific example that I want to show. And actually I'll link to this video down below so you can go find this, but I'm going to show you how to actually like step-by-step -step set up Zapier, generates a webhook, sends it to make, and then you can continue making more information. So that'll be in the next video. If this was a value, please like the video, subscribe. If you are a painting company or home service company that's looking to implement automation in your business, my entire channel and my business is geared towards helping painting companies automate and eliminate mindless brain numbing data entry that nobody likes to do. My name is Chris. I'm from Boolean, where we free you up to do what you love.